Uh, my name is uh, Bart Guion. I'm the Reeve of Brazo County, and I'm pretty excited to be here with uh, the University of Alberta here. I'm Alain Issa. I'm a research assistant at the University of Alberta, and I work with Dr. Anne Neath. So my name is Imran Kokar. I'm a project manager with Brazo County in the uh, Public Works Department. Well, hi there. I'm Blair Murfield. I'm the Utilities Assistant Supervisor for Brazo County. Hi, so I'm Andy Quarant. I work for Brazo County Utilities Department. We're at the beautiful Violet Grove Lagoon for wastewater treatment, uh, just southwest of uh, Drayton Valley, Alberta. Well, the sewage treatment lagoon will work. It will bring in the, the sewage, the effluent, from whatever community. So in this case, with Violet Grove, what we have is we have uh, gravity flow sewage, um, sewage mains that flow down to a lift station. Lift station then pumps uh, the sewage from uh, it's a few hundred meters that way. Uh, it flows down underneath a creek and then up to, we have an inlet just on the far end of the, the first cell down here. And so it flows into there, flows into what is our, our primary, our, our facultative um, cell. And that does a treatment for a maximum of 60 days. Uh, so within one to two months, it has flown in and then back out of that cell and then into our storage pond, which holds the sewage for the remaining uh, remainder of the year, so up to the 12-month period. Uh, we do discharge once per year in the fall. And so what will happen is in the, the primary cell, in the facultative cell, there's the aerobic and anaerobic bacteria that are working to break down that sewage and that waste. Um, as well, we also have algae in there, which is we're using photosynthesis off the sun and um, converting that into oxygen, which is feeding the bacteria. The bacteria, of course, will grow and feed more, um, work on that sludge layer that basically um, is created on the bottom of the, the lagoon cell, and it feeds on that, breaks it down, and so, of course, we get a lot of settling out of that first cell. Uh, we get the wind coming through, and that helps move the, move the water as well as uh, introduce oxygen into it. Once we get through, um, we get through all the summer, the summer sunlight and the summer heat, which is where our real uh, treatment period, because we get all that heat and all that sunlight, um, really activating all the bacteria and the algae, and we get all of our real treatment in the summer. Uh, end of the summer into the fall is when we do our discharge. Uh, so in this lagoon, we open up a valve and then it drains out our just our storage pond, not our primary pond. Uh, it drains out the storage pond into a natural drainage ditch and then that water will eventually make its way all the way down to a creek and then to a river. And so in this case, it flows down to the North Saskatchewan River. But that whole time that it's flowing through those ditches and creeks, it's getting additional treatment, extra air, extra bacteria, extra wet, natural wetlands that it's flowing through and uh, really um, cleaning up that water. Different lagoons will have different setups. Uh, this one is just a simple two cell lagoon system. Um, they can go, they can get bigger and bigger just by adding more lagoons or yeah, more lagoons, more ponds to the system which will be either aerobic or anaerobic or aerated or evaporative or storage ponds. So they can be any kind of uh, combination. Well, pros and cons, let's start with the pros. Obviously, it's a, it's a nice natural process. Uh, very little maintenance required with them, very little operator um, interaction required with it. Um, no chemical use. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a proven system that it works with the natural processes. Uh, cons, obviously it takes up a lot of space. Um, so this simple system only, only services uh, the community of Violet, uh, Violet Grove, so 140 people approximately. And uh, you start looking at bigger systems for bigger uh, communities and you end up looking at a lot of land and of course land next to big communities is expensive. So it, uh, that's the biggest downside to them is the, of course, the land use. Um, as well, if there's not, if you don't have enough um, air movement or water movement, then they can become mosquito breeding grounds. And um, you can end up with different issues as far as odors or um, animals as well with them too. 
The floating wetlands were established in 2019. This is a joint research project between Brazo County, Covey Associates Limited in Australia, and two researchers at the University of Alberta, Dr. Eman Nath and Dr. Mohamed Gamal Eldin. So the goal of adding floating wetlands over top of the existing a treatment process of a waste stabilization pond is to actually enhance the quality as of the wastewater as much as possible. So the lagoons actually uh, treat water naturally themselves by way of air and the natural processes, but the actual wetlands will enhance that quality even further so that when we're discharging the, the, the water once a year, the wastewater, it's it's not just meeting the standard, it's gonna be exceeding over and above at the very highest level that's possible because we wanna make sure that uh, the, the streams, the, the animals, everybody else that's, you know, the water is, the wastewater is going to, it's safe for everybody. So there's the, the chance, the possibility, um, the opportunity for the plants to draw up nutrients out of the water. So of course, any of your, um, nitrates, nitrites, phosphorus, anything like that, it can, it, they have the opportunity to bring that up and use it as food. Um, as well, there's also the opportunity that they can start drawing up any of the, possibly the heavy metals, the, uh, the pharmaceuticals, or even the micro pollutants as well. Um, so that's what kind of this, uh, this study is about, is trying to find out what, what can actually be brought up with, uh, with the plants. Um, and of course, that's just how the plants are growing. Um, the plant roots below the surface are also giving all kinds of surface area for that bacteria to grow and reproduce and live and, and survive and thrive. Um, so it just gives that much more surface area for more bacteria to create a better effluent. Um, so that's of course the main, the main benefit to this and obviously um, the birds and the ducks do like to get out onto those wetlands and it's, it's a very nice nesting area for, for them. It's not ideal for when we're trying to work out there, but um, we haven't come across that yet because of course we're, we have quite a bit of activity going on out there um, for the most part. But um, yeah, so it gives another habitat for the, for the animals. And then um, of course it just helps it make it look a little bit nicer too. We try to find a way to use uh, agriculture as a means to clean up wastewater. Uh, this isn't the first project of this nature. We had a, a solar aquatics in Cynthia, Alberta, where we basically took all the waste from a community of about 50 and ran it through a building that had a series of tanks that helps to clean up the water. Once again, using the uh, aquatic plants and stuff to actually help with that. So we thought by expanding that and trying something slightly different, like an outdoor floating wetlands, it once again could maybe use agricultural initiatives to actually help clean up waste from municip municipalities and the commercial businesses. So um, basically in 2016, uh, Brazos County Council, in response to a uh, concern by a resident uh, pertaining to the discharge of our treated wastewater out in the, uh, uh, in the open, um, they were uh, asked, they had asked us to actually look into ways to enhance the uh, the, the wastewater treatment process that we use for the with the lagoons and so in 2017 of October we brought in a full report with various options um, uh, from which there was uh, wetland selected and the options were graphene, uh, reed beds, willows and of course the wetlands so um, so we, we did a thorough uh, study of of these different options and then brought in their our recommendations so for the graphene the recommendation was to not go with it because it's too experimental it has too many variables there was uh, no actual real life municipal example of using um, anything pertaining to that that we could find and also so for the uh, the willows we found a nearby municipality a county that that has used it however the operational cost pertaining to their uh, the, the actual uh, annual operating the harvesting and all that stuff was and and then the capital cost was was pretty high as well uh, the reed beds weren't recommended because their uh, their actual survival is is uncertain and with regards to their actual 
capital cost of actually building another cell and all that would have been pretty um, high as well. So, and then so, but, but with the wetlands, um, it was very low maintenance. So with the wetlands, we have the advantages and disadvantages. So the advantages of the wetlands was they're tested, experimented, and they have been tried out in various places um, around the world, um, Australia, New Zealand, Europe, China, and so we've got some examples there. We were able to visit a few sites as well. So, um, and they were predominantly the uh, stormwater um, uh, application, but uh, we, we saw so, some of those. So th those are the kind of the recommendations and uh, the, or the actual advantages. And the disadvantages were that they lack actual Canadian municipal application, uh, specifically for the wastewater treatment. But, uh, we, we were confident that we can implement this sort of thing for enhancing the wastewater. Uh, the reason that we didn't actually consider an actual plant is because uh, we wanted to keep the cost pretty low. So we've actually tried the wetlands ourselves in a solar aquatic facility in Cynthia. It's a controlled facility where plants treat the waste for that community. So uh, they, they've been tried in a controlled environment and they've been tried out in the open for like stormwater application, stormwater ponds, but not very commonly in the enhancing of the wastewater, uh, like the domestic rural wastewater. So we wanted to be a bit different this time where we actually apply them to right on the lagoon and because we have experience with them. So the, the, our wetland system consists of uh, square modules that hold plants in them. So there's 15, um, so there, there are 2.35 meter by 2.35 meters square and about just over 200 millimeter deep. And they have uh, 15 different openings in them. Those openings hold baskets and the baskets are perforated so that we're able to actually plant within the baskets and the plants grow right into the water. So the roots are actually grown through those perforations in the water itself. And so that's what our system is. Um, there is uh, 20 different uh, actual modules and the, they're, they're plastic, so they're made of LDPE, low density polyethylene uh, material. And um, yeah, and we've got two different species of plants in them um, that we've got currently in the main system. We've got a separate little system that's got five other species that we're testing out as well. One of our goals is to assess which species are best suited to remove pollutants. The species were selected by Covey Associates and the researchers at the University of Alberta. Selection was based on past research showing evidence of pollutant uptake, being native species to the area, and the ability to source the plants at a reasonable cost. In the main system, the two species used are water sedge, Carex aquatilis, and panicled bulrush, Scirpus microcarpus. Each of these is native to Alberta, can be locally sourced, and are known to have taken up pollutants in past research. The system we established in spring 2021 has American managrass, Glyceria grandis, American sluegrass, Beckmania zacni, Turn sedge, Carex retrosa, soft bull rush, Shonoplectus tabernae montani, and Baltic rush, Juncus balticus. These five species are native to Alberta, and our goal is to determine which of all these species are best suited to remove pollutants. In the summer, throughout that uh, the six, five, six months, we harvest the plants multiple times, and the uh, the cuttings go into garbage, they, that's uh, waste material, so we, we throw them out um, in the proper disposal manner. To determine whether floating wetlands improve water treatment, we periodically collect plant samples from the floating wetland and water samples from the lagoon. Focusing on the vegetation, plants are assessed throughout the growing season from May to October. This helps us understand how plants uptake nutrients and metals at different stages of their annual life cycle. So today we have been doing some measuring of the uh, shoot biomass of the plants as well as the root biomass of the plants. We measure the maximum length of shoots and roots in the field on the floating wetland. At the University of Alberta Labs, we weigh plants to determine the total dry biomass of shoots and roots. First, plant samples are washed to remove debris or wastewater that may be on the surface of the shoots or roots. This allows us to determine what is in the plant tissue. 
The plants are oven dried, weighed, and sent to a commercial laboratory to analyze the nutrient and metal concentrations in the tissue. Analyzing roots and shoots separately helps us to identify the part of the plant where most of the nutrients and metals are stored. The tissue concentration and plant growth data together allow us to determine which species have the greatest potential to enhance wastewater treatment at the lagoon. Yes, those six totes that you see there are the mesocosm studies. So there's, as you see, there's four with plants in them, two without. So on the far side, those three, so there's the two types of plants in there, your carex and your scurpus pl um, plants. So one with each is aerated and then there's an empty one that's aerated. And the last three have your carex, your scurpix, and then they're a non-aerated, just effluent. Just to see how it reacts to different things, what treats better, what treats worse all that kind of stuff, what's going to work the best for if they do plan to expand, extend the floating wetlands into a full scale kind of deal. Ah, the solar is also exciting there. Uh, this project here will, won't be a net, po or a net zero uh, facility, it'll actually be a net positive. So the energy requirements that are going to be utilized here to run pumps and other things like that will be supplied by the solar energy, but there'll be a surplus amount of power that's being generated and that surplus power will actually go back into the grid and make this place a net positive, both from an energy side and a revenue side as well. So it'll actually become a revenue generating part of our county. That'll run any of the energy requirements that they need here, primarily aeration, but they may have lights, they may have other things that they need to do. It's pretty exciting because in the wintertime when there's no energy requirements here, that solar will be 100% exporting to the grid. We, uh, this is a great uh, facility. We've got an amazing project that we're doing here with the floating wetlands. I think uh, it's very innovative and I think it's great for our community and overall for the environment as well. We will continue to innovate our, our rural wastewater treatment processes because as Brazos County we believe in innovation and so we will continue to enhance our existing system, its application. We've got um, seven lagoons in total so we've got plenty of uh, space to actually try out the wetlands and actually see their different applications. Like I said, we've got seven different species so we're testing out all those species we can uh, recommend to council. Uh, as the results come up and then go from there for the future, but we will continue to innovate and continue to be um, in the leading edge for this type of a system. <laughs> we'll continue to collect and assess our plant and water samples until the end of the growing season to help us determine how the floating wetland treatments are working, what species are most effective, and if the floating wetlands are improving the water being released from the lagoon. We try to foster innovation and we're always looking at trying new and different ways of doing things. Like I said, this here is using agriculture, but in a different way. So it ties into a lot of the other things that we're doing with energy. So we're working with companies like Ever, which is a deep well geothermal. They could be using that to energy for either heat or for power. We're looking at another company that uses compressed air inside of pipelines that could store the energy inside a pipeline. Um, and other initiatives, especially the solar, we've actually really focused on, even at Brazil. County, we've saved over 200000 in the actual costs. So we try to do things that make economic sense that have an environmental benefit as well.